Hey guys, uh, so lamb rack, crispy skin lamb rack in fact. Uh, yeah, we, basically I just translated my uh, pork belly recipe to lamb. Um, and it's super duper easy, it's probably even easier, there's zero preparation. Uh, again, just like pork belly, you just need high heat, uh, well you don't even need dry skin. Um, there is a few little tricks to doing it right, uh, but you can do it in the smoker. Weber kettle is the best. You can do it on a rotisserie. Uh, you can do it in pretty much anything as long as you can get high heat. Uh, I quite like it in the air fryer as well. Um, now, please, guys, uh, if you hit any roadblocks, just let us know. Uh, 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 just uh, uh, put it in the comments, and I'll help you to be able to nail it as well as my pork willy or any other recipe. So please just let us know. I'll be a, look forward to you guys enjoying the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, just hit that button. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the other side. Alrighty guys, so we're just gonna prep this. Got a beautiful bit of lamb rack, just a little bit of a sliver of stuff there. And now, I'm just gonna score it. Now, I wouldn't normally do this with my pork belly, so why do you ask if anyone has seen my pork belly video? Um, I don't believe you need to do it with pork belly or to get pork crackle. There's maybe an argument to do it with something like a loin or something like that that's round, but you don't need to do it with a flat pork belly. And you definitely don't need to do it with lamb rack, but I'm doing this more for presentation. So you don't need to go to any extremes with getting the skin really dry like you would with, with pork belly. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these score marks now you don't want to go all the way through you just want to get through that layer of fat okay about a centimeter spacing okay now one really important thing guys bring it to room temperature just trust me on this one you get all sorts of guys saying don't do it don't do it doesn't do anything now when i say room temperature i'm going to be leaving out not just for half an hour an hour i'm going to be leaving out for a few hours in the summer months and uh, a lot longer in winter months to bring that to room temp because if you left something like this out for a half an hour, it wouldn't come up to room temp. Now you can cheat with the microwave on the defrost setting. Okay, that's me pretty much done. You'll just notice it's a lot more tender if you bring it up to room temp. If you tried two side by side, one that's been brought up to room temp and one that hasn't, you'd know 100% straight away the moment you taste it that the one that had been brought up to room temp is a hell of a lot more tender. Now, I don't do that with my briskets, pulled pork, etc. Any big cuts that I'm cooking well past, well done. Only the stuff that I'm cooking to sort of medium, medium rare, maximum of well done. Okay, guys, we'll come back and season that in a second. Alrighty, so I'm gonna season this now. Um, okay, so what I'm using is Butcher's Axe Hunter. That's my, my favorite lamb rub. Now you can put, sorry, it's hard to see when I've got my hand in front of it. You can put some oil on it to help it stick. I generally will. Now for the guys that are barbecuing, this can mess with smoke rings from time to time. So sometimes you might notice my pork belly hasn't, or lamb hasn't got the best smoke ring when I'm doing lamb rack. And that's often not only because just because of the high temps, because uh, I'm cooking all this hot and fast, um, but it's also, um, uh, sometimes the rubber will impact it and sometimes the oil will impact as well. Now, just remember, you don't wanna put, get this on the skin at all. You wanna go quite heavy with that. You don't, but remember, you don't wanna get this on the skin at all. Okay, so that's me done there. Now you can try to get the rub to stick. So if there's any rub there, you wanna get that off because that will burn. Anyone that knows pork belly, when you've uh, applied a rub to the actual skin itself, that it will burn and burn. Crackle tastes like crap, okay? So that's that done. All we're gonna do now is put some salt on top. Now you wanna go quite hard with that salt. And then that's us done. Just remember, pat it in, don't rub it, just pat it in. And I'll generally just do that just before she's gonna go on the grill. Cool, we'll come back uh, 
and uh, yeah, show you how to cook this baby. Okay, for the guys at home, uh, looking to put a thermometer in there, just uh, look, I'd recommend getting used to feel. Um, it will take time to get used to feel and getting accustomed to it and dialing in those spidey senses or the, uh, the Jedi uh, instincts. Um, but uh, a thermometer is a great way to be able to cross-reference that and calibrate, self-calibrate. So what I'll do is I'm gonna flip her over. I come from the, so you find but roughly where the middle of it is. Okay, got a bit of fat hanging in there. Get that out of the way. Um, find roughly where the middle is. Right, and then I'll use my fingers as a depth gauge. I'll draw a line there. What I'm gonna do is gonna come from the middle. So find the middle there, and you wanna poke that through all the way until it touches your fingers, which obviously, remember how I use that as a depth gauge? You know that's dead set in the middle. But always cross-reference that with what you're actually feeling as well. Okay. Okay guys, just want to show you how I set up my charcoal and I light things. Now, what I'm gonna do, just make sure you do this with fresh charcoal. Now, I've had to shoot this the day after because I, I literally forgot to show you this bit. Just to make sure that that's fresh charcoal under there, don't reuse charcoal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually light the charcoal in a couple of spots there, and then I'm gonna pop these chunks of charcoal on top of that, okay? And so I've stacked that really high. Now, I've got the JG offset plate. I just find that that makes life a hell of a lot easier for me. I really don't use the baskets in this at all. If you're gonna use the baskets, just pack the, stack the baskets up really high, and I'd only be using one side, and I find I only need one side, side especially with the JG offset plate. Now, um, you light it in two spots. If you light it from the bottom and it comes up, you'll, you'll actually get a, a lot stronger fire if you're going into fresh charcoal. Um, but yeah, you want to get that running about 250 degrees Celsius, about 500 Fahrenheit. And you want it in multiple spots because basically what will happen, will join up. And then if you think your lamb rack's sort of this long, um, you'll have the opportunity to have that flame all the way across uh, the, the, uh, the rack of lamb and then that will crisp up nice and easily without you having to move it around too much. But yeah, any questions, please comment on the, uh, in the comment section below. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna run it at about 250 Celsius now, which is about 500 Fahrenheit. Now, really good trick. I leave the racking out until just before I chuck the uh, the lamb on. Okay, so I'm gonna put one one chunk there. Okay, and so just so it doesn't cook it too much from the actual metal itself. So then I'm gonna stick a one of those IKEA uh, uh, pot organizers or lid organizers. And then I'm gonna stick that relatively close to the fire to make use of those flames and all that heat. Okay, so you need to watch this like a hawk. Now, I don't run with temp probes. I personally like to keep my uh, spidey barbecue spidey sensors sharp, so I just go on touch alone, but uh, I'll, I'll put in a, uh, a section for temperatures to look for based on the doneness and uh, that you like so that's on now i'm going to be checking that every five minutes obviously just watch out if she falls over to make sure she doesn't fall over as well because i've had that happen before next minute you come back and you've got a big fire and your land black so we'll come back shortly and we'll see you soon okay guys it's running about 250 fahrenheit sorry celsius 500 fahrenheit now to get it to there you might have to fully load that basket like I've done. And I'll usually run with charcoal as opposed to briquettes, but you have a look at the little thing I, thing I do. Excuse my fat guts and the reflection. Just crack the lid like that, just to allow a little bit more airflow. And you'll get it really humming like that. And I'll quite often start it like that to start, just to get it really, really cruising along nicely.
Alrighty guys, 10 minutes gone. Now if you have a look at that, you can see she's starting to crackle up already. Now I've had to, as you can see, it's slightly moved a bit. I moved it a bit away from the flame because uh, as you can see, this bit's starting to curl around this way. So you just want to keep it nice and even. So you might want to actually move that back and forth this way and also side to side, depending on how she's crackling up. But that's, you can actually feel that. And so when you guys use your senses, so touch it. I mean, it's hot, but touch it. So you can feel what's going on. You can actually see what's going on. You can see it's crackling. You see there's little tiny bubbles forming there. Okay, we're gonna pop that on for another 10 minutes. And then we're gonna start checking for tenderness after that. Alrighty guys, we're at the 20 minute mark. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move it back here a bit. Just change the angle, the dangle so to speak. And let it cook for the remainder of the cook. That's pretty much set now. So let's I'll take the camera out so you can have a good look. Sorry guys. Beautiful. Okay guys, I reckon that's almost done for the five to ten minutes. Just check for I just touch it there, that feels very rare to me. Um, you might don't be afraid to use an instant read thermometer until you get good at this um, and you can also just put a probe in there to start off with if you're going to do that just put it from the side but we'll come back shortly okay guys we're 25 minutes in just gonna check that still feels like probably go another five minutes more Come back in five minutes. Alrighty. Let's check up. See where we're at. That'll do. One good thing about this is that you'll notice that this bit towards the thinner end might be closer to medium, medium well, and this bit's gonna be closer to medium rare to uh, a rare to medium rare. I actually quite like it rare. <laughs> really offends people when if I take photos of it a bit too rare, but I don't mind it like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it on here now. Have a look at that. If you touch it, you can feel she's hard. So it's going to be nice and crispy. All right, we're going to rest that for about 15, 20 minutes. I sort of like to rest it a bit more, 20 to 25, sometimes in 30 minutes before I slice into it, but have a look at that, that looks gorgeous. You should smell it. And that charcoal I use as well has got a wicked smell. You could actually quite often cook um, the lamb alone uh, without any any smoke, any wood chunks, and it comes up with this really good flavor. Look at that. Oh. All righty. I think I'm about as moist as this lamb. Let's have a look at it. Let's go slice into it. Okay, moment of glory. So what I usually do, just line that up so you're cutting, so you're not going to cut through. Okay, so a nice medium. Beautiful. I'm not sure if you can see that. So yeah, usually what I'll do, you see that beautiful medium, is I'll take it to about 125 Fahrenheit. Jeez, I'll have to do the conversion for you Celsius guys later. I'm so used to Fahrenheit nowadays. 125 Fahrenheit, and then because she's cooking so quick, at 250 Celsius or 500 Fahrenheit, you, it, like, there's a lot of carryover cooking. So you've got a lot of momentum, and so you can't just stop on the spot. So that's why I stop it a bit early when I cook it at that speed. Um, and then what I will do is, uh, that, that's usually for a perfect medium. If you want it to be medium rare, just stop at that little bit early. Usually about 10 Fahrenheit early, about five degrees Celsius. But that's it guys.